I'll try and talk a little bit about uh, hunger and food security, but with a different approach. What I thought would be nice is, first of all, to share a little bit of a context, in particular about Tanzania. I will be focusing on Tanzania. Um, and to do that, I'll take you through um, the demographics, a little bit look into GDP and then the employment, and then you will see where I'm going with this. And then I will also share a little bit about poverty and nutrition, and then cover a little bit on where are they hungry, and, and in particular here looking at the examples around stunting and breastfeeding. And then with that, I will... Uh, conclude with some implications. So when it comes to Tanzania, or maybe most of the developing country, this is the kind of the population pyramid that you do expect to see with a very broad, um, with a very broad base, whereby we have more than 50% of a population less than 24 years. But then, yet again, if I separate this and I share with you uh, the difference between urban and rural, what you see and we had this morning, some of the challenges that we will be seeing is with regards to what do we do with the uh, urban bulge that we, with the youth bulge that we are seeing coming into the urban areas. And this we'll see later on that it's very important when we're talking about uh, nutrition to consider especially the youth who are moving from the rural areas and they were engaged in some activities and they come to the urban areas. Are there jobs to accommodate them? Is there food enough to accommodate them? Do they get the services uh, to accommodate them? Now, moving away from population, the next thing that I want to share is with regards to the, uh, the sectoral composition of GDP. In particular here, I'd like you to look at the, the last two uh, columns where I share the GDP uh, in terms of industry, agriculture, and uh, services. What you see is over the years, the contribution of agriculture has been less than 30%, but that of, uh, of industry is around 20, and that of services is around 47. But when you think about just a little bit uh, before we had the structure adjustment program that is in the, in the 1987, Agricultural contribution to our GDP was around 50. Now, a quick question will be, does it mean employment is also following in the same order, whereby the sector that is contributing less than we should expect it to have less people, or is it the opposite? So the next slide, I share a little bit about the employment. And here what we see is, over the years, Agriculture still has a lot of people who are working in it. The previous slide I just said we only had about 20% of people, I mean 20 to 30% contribution to GDP, but the number of people who are working in the agriculture sector is, uh, is over 75%. And then the industry, uh, we have about 4.4% and the services we have about 15%. Uh, now, in Tanzania right now, what we have is we've just uh, adopted the five-year development, our second five-year development plan, which is aimed at industrialization. Now, when I show you these figures, the first two slides, the previous slide, um, the, the, the previous slide on the GDP and the, and the employment, one thing that strikes you is it's one thing for you to aim to have an, um, an industrialized economy. It's something else to have most of your, of your population engaged there. And already, uh, we are happy to have the second five-year development plan that is saying it will be very, very important to have more people engaged in agriculture out moving into industry. As we are seeing, uh, our system has not, uh, has not managed so far to do that. Now, when we have people engaged in uh, industry, and we had this morning, unfortunately, the data is showing us they're being engaged there informally. So then again, we come, okay, so we do create jobs in industry if they're there, but if they're there, then people are engaged in, in, uh, informally. Then all the questions around nutrition come in. 
if people have, do not have decent jobs or they are involved in a particular uh, sector informally, how good is this for the future of, of themselves and the future of the children? In most cases, when we talk about nutrition, it's very important. We not only think about the, the productive, uh, um, the productivity of the people who are engaged, but also the, the kids that are going to be, um, uh, to come about. Now, here I share another slide just to show you the extent. As I said, this is from Tanzania. Uh, here, this is the population that is employed by secondary activity. The first one was by main activity, where I showed most people are engaged in agriculture and very few people are engaged in the industry. Here, I break down a little bit. Um, by secondary activity, this means that the second activity a person does after the first one, whereby the main activity is assumed to be an activity that a person uses more time. So if I am, let's say, in rural Tanzania, I pick any village, let's say, uh, Nanjilinji, and I spend six hours in agriculture, my main activity will be agriculture. But if my other two hours I work in any of the sectors that are, are listed here, then I will be less, that will be listed as a secondary activity in the uh, integrated labor force survey. So what we see, I said we're aiming to become an industrialized, uh, a middle income country come 2025 in our second five year development plan. So all these activities around here, from mining, manufacturing, construction, all these are the ones that we are aiming for. But what the data is showing us, we have more people engaged now in these sectors that we are aiming for, but they're engaged there informally. And the numbers that I wanted to point it out to you is the women. When it comes to mining, not only are they more involved now, in previously they were not even there, but now they're involved but informally, 27%. When it comes to um, construction, they're also involved there. So the main activity, we don't see women, but once it comes to the secondary activity, we see women. And if this is where they're getting more money, it means they're spending, they will start to spend more time. Then when it comes to nutrition, will they have time to take care of the family? Will they have time to feed the family? I thought I'd start with this context. Now, when we look at uh, the poverty levels in, in Tanzania using the poverty headcount ratio, there are differences between urban and rural as presented here. But not only do we see the differences between urban and rural, but also between uh, extreme poverty and the basic need uh, poverty. Uh, Dar es Salaam, this is the, uh, where everything nearly happens. And then you see the differences between other urban areas and the rural areas. What strikes you very quickly is when it comes to food poverty, it, you, have, you see a lot of improvement in Dar es Salaam, but less in the other urban areas and further less in the rural areas. And when it comes to, um, same applies when it comes to the basic need, but for this case, I, I want to concentrate more when it comes to uh, the food uh, poverty, because that's very uh, important. Um, I thought also, just because we have differences between Dar es Salaam, uh, other urban and rural, it's also important I share with you that there are variations within regions in Tanzania. Uh, the map on your right hand side, that's Tanzania with the uh, 36 regions. It's exactly the same thing presented, but then in this format. Dar es Salaam, as seen before, only has about 5% uh, of, peop of pe uh, people who, are, uh, who fall under basic need poverty line, but then you have the likes of Kigoma, which is right here uh, at the border with Rwanda and Burundi, with the highest level of poverty of up to 48% of the population uh, of the people who are poor. Now, when you're uh, having such, uh, such figures, still, there are even more differences within uh, regions, and this in particular is showing the districts again. You see the, the northwestern uh, side being more darker, whereby you have more than 50% of the population um, with, uh, with poverty, I mean, 50% of the population under the basic needs poverty, and at the same again, you see it on the south, uh, the southeast. 
But when we come to look into population density, because this is per square area, then the area is a little bit different. And then you see you're having more urban poor. This is the time when we can start talking about the urban poor. Earlier, I showed you about the bulge uh, of, the, of the young people moving more and more, moving to the urban areas. Quite a, a, it could be a reflection of what we are also seeing here, that the poor people who are coming to the urban areas are contributing to the numbers that we are seeing here. In as much as there are lots of uh, privileges in the urban areas, there are still differences. So after that uh, introduction of overview about the context in Tanzania, what we know is when we have improvement in nutrition, you will have also reduction in extreme poverty. You will also have people uh, with improved uh, education of their kids, also reduce gender inequality. And also if people have education, it means also you will have less uh, child death because they can take a good care of their kids. And even with that, they can space their, their kids better. You will have less maternal mortality. And also, you'll also have less risk of developing communicable and non-communicable diseases. And at the same time, if you have good nutrition, you're also better off uh, in recovering from any uh, illness that you would have. Now, in most cases, when we talk of uh, nutrition, I'm, I'm with a very high panel here of experts about nutrition. I'm purely an economist. But, um, when you look at the, the demographic and, and health uh, um, survey, there are different indicators that they share, just to show you uh, what are the um, different uh, issues that you can look into when you're talking about malnutrition or you're talking about nutrition. And for me, all the time, when I refer to nutrition, I will stick to that, because for me, that's like once you're able to solve that, then the issues around hunger and, uh, and food security are also sorted out. So that's how I looked at the, and I understood uh, what I was supposed to do. So low birth weight, it means for children, you want them to have more than two and a half kilos. While uh, when you have low height for age, you don't want to have your kids uh, stunted or low weight for age, wasted. And then now recently, more and more, talking about high weight for age, overweight, and the obese problems that we have, and also low weight for height, uh, underweight. But it's also very important for them to have required vitamins, not only vitamin A, but also iron and what have you. Now, as I said earlier, I will simply stick to two examples to put across a case of the importance of, uh, um, of nutrition. And I'm going to use stunting and breastfeeding. And breastfeeding. So here I'm sharing some data from Tanzania, uh, showing the children who are stunted. And this is for the kids who are under five. What you see is between uh, 1991 to 2010, the levels are really high for both. Um, female and, and uh, male. But then the, the boys are even more, have higher rates than the ladies, than the female uh, child. The female child is at the middle. And if you move and you look, if you, if you look at the, the differences in location between urban and rural, still just talking about stunting, what we see is uh, the urban children doing way much better than the rural uh, uh, children. Uh, but when it comes to age, and this is very important for the policy makers, stunting begins for children when they are less than six months, and it goes on and only picked up up to 24 months. It means if there is any intervention that you want to cap stunting, it must happen before that. If you're trying to intervene anything with a child after their three years, it means you've missed the board. So if this child is stunted, even before it means the, um, all the different uh, indicators I shared earlier, these kids, unfortunately, they're going to miss out. So all the intervention related to stunting must happen then. And these are the different, uh, different um, years from 1991 to 2010 from Tanzania. 
when it comes to wealth, uh, the, the children born uh, in the highest wealth quintile are doing better, but those born in the lowest up to the middle, all of them are not doing that much better. So intervention, it looks like all the people with the low, uh, from the middle to the lowest uh, quantile, they're doing bad, but except with the guys who are in the highest uh, quantile. Uh, this map here shows the improvement that uh, observed between 2004 and 1996, and nothing much, actually, unfortunately. You would see the areas that I, I showed earlier that had high poverty, like Kigoma and then south here, they're not much, much improvement uh, observed there. Now, when it comes to breastfeeding, uh, the WHO okay, encourages that every woman should breast, uh, breastfeed their children up to six months, okay, and exclusively be breastfed. Now, in Tanzania, these are the figures. You can see um, the highest now we have, they do breastfeed up to, uh, to, uh, to about close to three months, but not really three months, okay? But then what strikes you very quickly from this, and um, the urban area is represented by the orange color and the rural area is by green. The breastfeeding figures show that People in the, residing in the women in the rural areas actually do breastfeed more than the people in the urban areas. And breastfeeding is very important because at the first, uh, when the child is born, within the first hour, if the child is breastfed, then, then they are protected from a lot of you know, allergies and what have you later on. And then up, if they continue like this up to six months, no liquids, no water, nothing, then this child is even protected more. But what this graph is showing us, actually the people in the rural areas are doing it better than the, 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 the people in the urban area. So this would have implications. Because we know if you're not breastfeeding a child, you have to be very careful with the type of water you're going to use. You have to be careful with the uh, formula that you're going to give your child. You have to be careful with the supplementary foods that you're going to introduce to the child before the six months. All that would impact um, the growth of this particular child. Now, I thought I'd share another example from Ghana, whereby for them, the average is around... Um, the average for the urban areas, you have about four months. In Tan this on the right-hand side, this is Tanzania. On your left-hand side, this is Ghana. So Ghana is doing way much better in the breastfeeding uh, 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 field. And still, for them, uh, which is opposite to Tanzania, you see that the urban uh, population is breastfeeding more than the rural. So what are the implications of everything that I've said? So... On the side of stunting and a lot of other indicators, if you look at them, we tend to see that the urban uh, uh, areas do outperform their rural counterpart, with the exception of the breastfeeding that I presented. Uh, again, I also showed that the future of the children is also determined before their three years. Stunting is very, very, um, is something that you, you would not want to have a lot of your kids uh, with that. Uh, at the same time, the working environment for mothers needs to allow continuous breastfeeding because we know when the, ch the children are breastfed, then um, they will also produce uh, a productive youth who then can become uh, uh, helpful in the economy. Now, why do, am I raising this point? Earlier, I showed that we do have a growing uh, informal economy. So if we want women engaged in, uh, in different activities, it's very important that they are given time to breastfeed their kids because it's not about them working now. It's about the kids that they will be producing that will need to work later. They need to be ready, and apart from having all the other uh, qualities that they have. Uh, to do this, then, it's important not only for the families and communities to work together, but also engage the private sector and the government in different intervention. In particular here, we talk about uh, the WASH uh, program, the water and sanitation program, and also uh, to improve the intake of vitamins and, and minerals. 
Um, and then one other thing, um, now with the SDGs, with no one should be left behind, it means that um, initially when I was giving the macro data, the more you go down, you see more differences. So it's very important we have data at the lowest level possible and we try to utilize the uh, routine data system that is available. Um, fortunately, the five-year development plan we have in Tanzania now is uh, calling for early childhood development um, that is very important, given what I've just said. But then it's also important the health workers that are providing these different services uh, are also trained to work with the community workers. And the families also um, need to know the importance of different foods and importance of uh, exclusively breastfeeding. Uh, while at the, uh, on the local government level, it's very important also for them to keep an institutional way of monitoring and tracking uh, all the different uh, nutrition indicators. Because uh, we know at the end of the day, uh, if you have malnutrition, it really does impact the disease that uh, you would have around your area, but at the same time, it would mean that you will have a low quality of food that uh, you are intaking, and then at the end of the day, you will have uh, poor um, maternal and childcare practices, mainly could be limited to access to healthcare. So what I've tried in a nutshell is simply to, sh to share with you uh, who are they hungry and where they are, but uh, the part of why are they hungry, that part I did not share much. Thank you very much.